it all starts with me writing my goals down, lock in and, you know, say a prayer, be thankful for the opportunity and to never, you know, take it for granted. Knowing that I'm playing and making everyone proud, I'm living my dream, so I'm just encouraging everyone to live theirs. Hi, my name is Chris Carter, and I'm on my way. I'm 27 years old. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and raised in Port St. Lucie, Florida, and I'm a professional basketball player. So when I was nine years old, I played basketball, baseball, and football, but the sport that I loved the most was basketball. I looked up to players like Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and I wanted to shoot like all of them. And I knew that if I can play basketball one day professionally, that would be my dream come true. My dream was always to go Division I and play Division I basketball at a big time college, but that wasn't the case. I chose Florida Tech because I loved the coaching staff and I knew that I would get a chance to play right away. I knew that I was not a Division II player, but I feel like as long as I did what I was supposed to do and showcase my talents on the court, somebody would notice me. We even played some tough programs such as Miami University and University of Central Florida. I had really good games against these teams and it showed that I belonged on the same court as some of the top players in the country. So after I graduated college, I signed with an agent and I knew I had to play the waiting game. So the summer was really tough for me because nobody was reaching out because I went to a Division II school. I was very frustrated, but at the same time very motivated because I knew that I can play professionally. I even hand wrote a contract saying, this team wants you to play for them. And then I just left the money part blank and then I signed it and I put it on my fridge. And every day I touched my fridge before I worked out, just used it as motivation. Just told myself that somebody's gonna take a chance on me. Shortly after, maybe six weeks into my workouts, a team from Ukraine called and said that they really liked me and they wanted to offer me a contract. So I signed the contract with BIPA Odessa, which is First League Ukraine. I was super happy. It, my dream came true of playing professionally. Living in Ukraine was something that I'll never forget. It was an immediate culture shock. Everyone spoke Russian, nobody spoke English. The letters were in Cyrillic. I've never seen these letters before. I had no clue what was going on. I just wanted to play basketball. There was only one person on my team that really spoke good English besides my assistant coach. This guy was 16 years old, so my best friend in Ukraine was 16. It was very tough for me. I immediately tried to learn Russian. By the end of my eight months there, I was speaking a good amount of Russian. This was my first time away from home. I was in a foreign country. I knew nobody, you know, and I just wanted to really just settle in, but I knew that this was gonna be the toughest thing of my life. Uh, there was a lot of times where I had depression and sad thoughts, but I knew at the end of the day that I was playing professional basketball. This was my dream. Yes, it's not the NBA, but this is everything that I wanted. And I knew that if I can play and play well, that some other country will take a shot on me and I can do well there too. So I had a really good season in Ukraine, which allowed me to get noticed by Coach Rodrigo from Chemnitz Niners. I was so happy that I got the call from Coach Rodrigo. He said that he was from Germany. I, that's all he had to say for me because I knew I just wanted to get out of Ukraine. And I knew that Germany, I've heard a lot of good stories about German basketball and that it's a good step up to where I wanted to go to. So my second professional season, was in Chemnitz for the Chemnitz Niners. I had a really good season, statistically speaking. I was probably one of the best guards in the league. Living in Chemnitz was much better than living in Ukraine. It was a big step forward for me. I had my own car, I had my own apartment. I had less depressing thoughts. It was much better for me. There was more Americans. I think there were three Americans on my team. 
And so I was much more happier. There was more stuff to do and more places to go to. So I was very happy. So we overachieved as a team, I thought, and we came in third place overall. We went to the playoffs, and in the playoffs, it's a best of five. The first team we played was Trier, and that went to game five, so it was a tough competition, but we won that game. Then the next team that we played was Gota in the semifinals, and that also went to game five, and we lost at home. It was probably one of the worst losses that I've been a part of because we worked so hard to get to where we were. It came down to the last shot of the game. So I knew that I left everything on the floor and my team left all everything on the floor and I was really proud of them. So after that tough loss, I made sure that I had a good summer. I worked out really hard and it didn't take long for my agent to get me the Vector contract. Vecta was a team from the Bundesliga. They made it clear right away that they wanted to move up again and they wanted me to be the point guard of the team that moved them back up to the first league. So I signed with Vecta and I prepared over the summer to be the best point guard in the league. So we won the championship in my third year playing. Yeah, this was my dream come true. I mean, to, to win a championship in three years, not a lot of people can say they did that. And I was just happy to be a part of that group. Now, my fourth professional season, I knew that I wanted to try my hand in the BBL with the same team that I helped bring up. Going into the first BBL season, I knew that it was going to be very tough. Uh, it was a lot of hard work. Practices were much more different than what I was used to. The coach was really hard on everyone. The BBL season was going really well. We had a Cinderella story where nobody thought that we would even stay in the league to coming into fourth place, which was just unheard of. We had a great group of guys, veteran leaders, um, Josh Young, Austin Hollins, TJ Bray. Some of these guys are playing Champions League and Euro League now. It was just great to be a part of that team that won so many games. So the playoffs went really well for us. We played against Bamberg in the first round and Bamberg is known for having the most BBL championships. That was just crazy because, you know, this little team that just moved up the year before beat such a powerhouse team. Um, moving forward, we played Bayern Munich in the semifinals, who was a EuroLeague team. And I think that we were outmatched because they had a lot of really good players on their team but the experience was just unbelievable and I was just super happy to be a part of that run. Um, personally, my first BBL season did not go the way that I wanted it to. You know, statistically, I didn't have the numbers that everyone expected me to have, which was very sad for me, um, you know, just because I thought that I knew I was better than what I was showcasing at the time. I thought that I've underperformed and a lot of it was my fault and I didn't I didn't play as good as I knew that I could have yeah I just I don't know if it was I think I had a lot of stuff going on at the house and back home and um, you know I had just a lot on my plate which didn't allow me to play at my best that everyone knew that I was capable of playing so uh, it was really tough. It was a tough pill to swallow because I knew that I was better than what I was showing. It was very frustrating having the role that I had at Vecta the second year um, after coming off of the first year when we won the championship. I knew there was guys that were really good on the team, but I knew that I can keep up. What was more frustrating is that I controlled my destiny and I didn't do what I was supposed to do to get on the court and really prove that I belonged in the BBL. I knew that my statistics was not going to allow me to get a really good contract in the first league. So I knew I had to go to a second league program and basically help win the second league. So during the playoffs, Coach Rodrigo contacted me again from Chemnitz and you know he basically told me that he wanted to have me again 
and help move this team up to the first league. So my mother always told me that everything happens for a reason. And sometimes you have to take one step back to take two steps forwards. I thought that this was a sign when Coach Rodrigo hit me up, said that he wanted me to come back and help give Chemnitz their first championship in the Pro A and help them move up to the BBL. Especially if we do what we're supposed to do and win the championship and move up, this would give me another chance at the BBL to prove myself that I belong there. Coming back to Chemnitz was really significant to me because it just goes to show that I've always had to deal with adversity and I've always overcome adversity. You know, in college I was not Division One; I, I was Division Two, And then, you know, I really struggled with getting my first job, but then I got it into Ukraine made it to winning my first championship in three years. So I'm no stranger to adversity. And even right now, currently we won 18 out of 19 games in Chemnitz right now. And so I just want to look at this maybe a year from now or six months from now. And hopefully we have a banner and a trophy that we won and that I made it through adversity again. I'm very blessed to play professional basketball. I've been given five years so far and hopefully I can play another five years. Uh, but I know that basketball will end eventually, and I just want to be ready for when it does. Once the ball stops bouncing for me, uh, I want to publish my first book. The book will be about my experiences playing professionally, things I've learned, things that I've gone through, my trials and tribulations, and also my advice that I would give to somebody that is trying to do what I'm doing. I graduated with my business administration degree. I'm taking courses right now in public speaking, and I'm reading investment books and the value of money and taking care of your money. Eventually, I want to become a business owner. I'm laying the groundwork now while I'm in Europe, in Germany, and whatever country that I'll be in, and just learning as much as possible so when the ball does stop bouncing, that it can be a smooth transition for me. Um, anything else that I want to say? Yeah. Just take advantage of the opportunity. If you ever, if anybody else wants to come to Europe, um, take advantage. To, you know, don't be one of those people that stay home and FaceTimes people from back home. I mean, Go live your life, go see some things. I mean, I've learned Russian, I've, I mean, small talk Russian, but I've learned some Russian. I know a good amount of German now. I'm still trying to take some classes and just trying to be better so I can be more cultured. Um, I think me being an American and uh, a lot of Americans don't really get out of, the, out of the country to see the world. And I think that if they do get a chance to really I think they should really just embrace the culture and, and try to see where you fit in in life. Fertig, das war's.